specialists. David Burroughs was on the program uh, May 18th of 2011. He brought with him two top picks and one recommendation, which was cash. Interpipelines up 23%, tell us by 15. You're still holding on to these. Yeah, Interpipe would be the biggest position in the firm, about 4% of our firm's assets. TELUS would be one of the other largest. It fits into the dividend growth theme. On that cash component, uh, still king as far as you're concerned, what percentage of a model portfolio would be cash today? Well, if you think back to May of last year, we were headed into a very rocky summer. So mm -hmm. that was a big position in, in the firm. At this point, we're pretty fully invested. All right, time now for the top picks. Top Picks is brought to you by Quest Trade, where you can trade stocks for $4.95. All right, uh, looking at the top picks uh, this time around, it looks like there is a theme. You touched on this a little bit earlier. You don't necessarily want to go for your 10% dividend yield. You slow and steady is what wins the race. Yeah, if you look at it in these sideways periods, dividend growth turns out to be pretty important. And as it stands right now, there's a great ability for corporations to raise dividends. The average corporation, the S&P, has over 6% of the balance sheet in cash. Mm -hmm. Cash has been growing at a 50% growth rate. They're paying out only an average of 26% of earnings, where over time it's averaged about 50. Uh, and in these difficult periods, dividend payouts tend to go up over time. And last year, there was a 14% year-over-year dividend growth in the S&P. There's some specific themes that give you much faster dividend growth, and the two of those pieces together can give you some predictability in a difficult world. Top pick number one is a clean energy company, uh, Next Era, which I see has got a 3.8% dividend yield, but a history of increasing it. That's right. Next Era is wind power largely in mm -hmm. Florida. Uh, the EPA looks very favorably on this utility company. They have a good growth rate, good growth rate in the cash flow. Uh, and it's the lowest variable cost producer of energy once the sunk cost is there. So given in a world with low gas prices, you need low costs, uh, and you're likely to see the cash flow accelerate and the dividend to grow. Do you expect the stock to grow? Because the consensus on the street is it's pretty fully valued already at $62. Right. So the big concern is that the, that the U.S. will cut back on programs to support wind power. The good news is, if that were to happen, they stop building new towers, then the cash really starts to build up. Mm. And so that's then when you'd see a significant bump up in the dividend growth. Intel, top pick number two, 3% dividend yield, but over the last five years, it's up more than 15%. Right. So technology is trading at the lowest valuation on forward earnings in 30 years. The average company has very significant cash hoard, and Intel is one of those companies. They've grown their, the, the group has grown the dividend last year by 30%, and Intel has been growing its dividend by 25%, and mm -hmm. it an accelerated this year. So you're going to get a 3-plus percent dividend rate, and they've got a major growth driver coming, which is computing goes to the cloud, right. server growth is there, and they got 90% market share. But why not go to Apple? And the reason why I bring that up is they just started a dividend. Sure, it's only 1.7%, uh, but with billions in the bank, it's expected to continue to grow. And there's stock price appreciation expected on Apple, where there really isn't on Intel. Well, I think that Apple is a name that is widely held by lots of people, and I don't want to discount that. We own it, too. I think that people don't understand the position that large cap tech like Microsoft and Intel are in given the 12 years they've just been through. Mm -hmm. So 12, 13 times earnings with 90% market share in servers, if you get growth in the cloud, Intel will have a much greater pricing power. And so they have significant cash. $5 billion in the balance sheet now, it'll be $8 billion by the end of the year. Dividend growth is going to accelerate. Richest payout I see here is top pick number three. It's Pembina, and it's a 5.5% or 13.5 cent distribution. Yeah, the number one theme we're focused on is midstream energy assets because oil sands production goes from a million and a half barrels a day today to 4.5 million by 2020, and you want to be in the middle of that volume growth. Mm -hmm. So Pembina uh, winds up being the largest of the midstream energy companies with a $10 billion market cap when they combine with Provident. They're going to get a 5 to 7% dividend growth rate going forward with very predictable business because 75 to 80% of the business is fee revenue uh, on services that they're providing. What did you make of McKenzie Valley Pipeline dead after, what, 20-some-odd years? Yeah, you know what? The, the, it's a very political game that's going on with the midstream energy companies. You want to make sure you've got the assets there. Pembina doesn't seem to be in that crosshairs, as it were. 
It doesn't, and ultimately I think that the midstreamers are going to be purchased by the very large players like Enbridge over time. So Is Pemba now the takeout target? Is I that what think, you're saying? I think that uh, many of these companies along the way are going to get purchased. I think the majors missed the opportunity and they're going to come in after the fact. We've seen lots of deals being done at premiums, and I think it's not impossible for any of the big Canadian midstreamers. You're recommending we buy these picks today, or do we wait till the sell in May and go away hits and they're cheaper? Look, realistically, we are being cautious. We've had a big rally in the market. I think these are companies you can buy and be safe with. I'd be careful of high beta. I'd be careful of chasing the resources that people have been chasing for the last few years. David, great having you with us. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. David Burroughs has been our guest. BNN.ca for the replay if you missed any part of the program. And a reminder, you can watch us again Tuesday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. A new time for the evening edition of Market Call with Mark Bunting. Join him at 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. And as always, please consult a qualified financial financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Have a great day. Apologies to Murray's golf buddies. Murray